Hi, I am Dr. Prince James, uh, Head International Pulmonology from Nervi Hospital, Velour. Over the last one and a half year, we and our country are all across the globe. I think all of us have gone through a sea change in our routine activity as well as we saw the disastrous first wave as well as second wave of COVID. And uh, it affected all the areas of our lives, including our day-to-day -day activity, which sleep is an important part of that. And uh, all of us must be having a story. Either we experienced COVID in our home or in the neighborhood. And we were too many times we were under stress because of COVID. Number of um, we, our friends, family members suffered from COVID. Because of those stress and um, other <clears throat> problems because of COVID like lockdown that we cannot go out of the house. So people were under stress and it affected their sleep. It affected their routine activity because they can't do exercises, they can't go out. They are away from school, from home, from their offices, staying at home. So all these stress lead to a lot of changes in our, you know, on our body. And as well as if we are under stress and not sleeping well, that also affects our body. So especially those people in our country, those who are having metabolic disorders like diabetes and blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, this whole COVID related stress and lack of sleep affect every part of their lives and a lot of people develop uncontrolled diabetes, blood pressure went up and um, COVID itself caused a lot of uh, rise in blood sugar as well as a uh, lot of um, coronary artery disease and cerebrovascular accidents which happens because of COVID. So that's the impact of COVID and other problem when the COVID was because hospitals were fully packed with the COVID patients. We were unable to provide routine services to the other patients who are coming there with uh, other diseases like COPD, asthma, respiratory illnesses, sleep related disorders. All those investigations, management, everything came to a standstill during this one and a half year time. So a lot of suffering because of COVID as well as because of the after effects of COVID. So regarding sleep apnea, actually the, it starts with snoring and I know that um, all of us must be Having one family member in our family who used to snore and we used to sometimes laugh about it or we ourselves snore. And obesity is another thing which we are witnessing now in our country and all across the globe. We know obesity is now a pandemic all across the world. And um, India is also not far away. Even in children, in schools, it is being noticed that uh, BMI of children are going up. And along with that, uh, a disease comes which is called obstructive sleep apnea syndrome, OSA. And that disease happens mainly in people who are having more weight or those who are obese and uh, those who have the history of snoring. So it happened all across the world and people noted it, medical fraternity noted it and um, uh, patients were tested, being diagnosed. But however, as far as India is concerned, there is a lot of um, you know, awareness need to be uh, bought. Uh, to the general public because usually we laugh at snoring and though uh, it affects the spouse uh, sleep but we just uh, laugh at it and just go away we do not worry about it but it affects our sleep and it has lot of ill effects uh, which uh, changes our metabolism and uh, it led to a lot of other disorders like diabetes blood pressure heart disease stroke which are irreversible conditions so though Sleep apnea is a reversible thing. You can control it, you can treat it, you can live a normal life with it. But if we do not treat it, we do not die, fail to diagnose it, then it leads to heart failure and stroke and we know these things are irreversible. Once they develop, we can only control them. We can try to bring patients back to usual life, but we cannot bring the organ function back to normal. And that's the importance of uh, uh, knowing about sleep apnea and uh, its management, treatment and a uh, lot of awareness need to be brought into in our country regarding obesity and snoring and its effect on sleep. So regarding the uh, after sleep apnea syndrome and all, a lot of advancement have happened over the last few years. Like um, diagnostic test is a sleep test and obviously it's a sleep test so we have to sleep overnight. And usually it is done in the sleep lab. So we have to go to the hospital in the evening by 7 or 8 o'clock, sleep there overnight. And it test is nothing but it automatically records all the findings. 
and morning we just get up and come back but however it uh, we have to uh, you know spend one night in the hospital however over the time the things have developed now there are tests available which can be done at home they are kind of a screening test the initial test can be done at home we can run that test for one day or three days get the diagnosis and if the diagnosis is confirmed on that basis of that uh, reporting and recording doctors can take the decision whether to start treatment or to do further test to diagnose accurately sleep apnea and then start the treatment so that's the advancement in diagnosis treatment also there are a lot of advances now that, that uh, better the treatment of sleep apnea syndrome is actually what happens in this during sleep our airways in the in the pharynx area in the upper neck i will say area they collapse and that's why air flow stops and our oxygen saturation drops and that has the effect on whole body because our body runs on oxygen so the treatment is uh, a device which can push air with the pressure so that our airways remains open during sleep also so that device is called uh, cpap uh, positive airway pressure ventilation and that comes in multiple forms so over the times new uh, new machines have come which can provide more comfortable treatment to the patient so that has evolved over the time and those uh, the equipments can be now available in our country also so to provide better treatment and better quality of life to the patients other advancements are still going on we are still looking for a medication which can help our patients we do not have yet a medicine a tablet to treat this disease similarly there are other advancement like mandibular advancement devices there are the devices which are put in the mouth fixed in the mouth during sleep to help patients however still the acceptance among patients are not that great a uh, lot of work need to be done in that area earlier days some surgeries were being done for this disease but um, recurrence rates are high so still the surgical treatment is the not main treatment the main treatment is uh, positive airway pressure ventilation therapy so that is the cpap or bipap is the treatment for osa at present weight loss is an important uh, part of it and we must try to lose weight because it can help us and improve our sleep apnea problem and uh, the study shows that those guys who are those patients who are using cpap they are there is very high chance that they can lose more weight than the people who are just trying to lose weight without using cpap therapy so actually cpap helps not only in improving our sleep and also reducing our weight so that we can have a better sleep and uh, sleep apnea syndrome symptoms can be brought down